I think we pretty much have a quorum here. Uh, a lot of people have come through the door. That's kind of slowing down. So I think we're good to go. So uh, next slide, please. With that, I'd like to introduce uh, on Andre Klempier, uh, who is a community engagement scientist and really an expert in neuroimaging research. Uh, if you're going to the Organization for Human Brain Mapping meeting in Scotland in June, Andre will be speaking there. I think that will be very exciting. Uh, I'm looking forward to it, so uh, check that out. Um, and without further ado, I'm going to turn the floor over to uh, Andre, and then you'll probably only hear me pop in with uh, uh, sort of uh, sporadic questions here and there from you guys. So, um, Andre, the floor is yours. Thank you, Ben. Thank you. Thank you very much for introducing me. Hello, everybody. So what is our agenda for today's uh, webinar imaging on the UK BRAP? So we will be covering information about basic image analysis concept. Then we will talk about imaging data formats. I will also jump into and explain image visualization. And we will show some examples of uh, how to run uh, imaging tools on the UK BRAP. So now more specifically, let's talk about learning objectives for this webinar. And by the end of this session, you should be able to describe basic concepts and definitions of image processing on the UK BRAP, then explain image and neuroimage data formats and how to answer image analysis related questions. Uh, we will try to explain why visualization is essential. And then we will provide and describe various image visualization methods. And in the last part, we will be looking into how to integrate neuroimaging tools into your scientific projects. So first, in the first part, I would like to talk about basic concepts of imaging on the UK BRAP and answer the following two questions. First of them is, uh, does our platform support image analysis? And then what are our uh, current image analysis capabilities? So with that, let's get started and uh, talk about uh, what is DNA uh, Nexus UK BRAP platform and how uh, we can manage imaging data at scale. DNA Nexus uh, UK BRAP image analysis platform is a platform powered by DNA Nexus and it uh, manages a large scale uh, biomedical data of uh, various types. It's uh, not only imaging, it's also genomics and other relevant phenotypes. And it manages data for more than 500K participants. And uh, examples of such imaging data, uh, which, which you can find on the platform, uh, are optical coherence tomo uh, tomography imaging. It could be cardiac imaging and many other uh, imaging resources. A uh, key part of this data is brain data. And uh, with that, over 50K participants uh, were scanned uh, to date. Uh, and if you would like to apply for this data, or if you already have access to that data, uh, this data is available with the tire three. Here, let's talk about individual imaging data and which data uh, from which part of body you can find on the UK BRAP. Uh, on the UK BRAP, you can find many data types uh, measured from uh, many parts of the body. You can work with uh, kidney MRI, liver MRI, or another example might be pancreas MRI or brain imaging. Uh, it's not only about um, magnetic resonance imaging, but also you, you can find there other, uh, other data types, as I mentioned, for example, OCTs or CT scans. And each uh, data file type has its uh, field ID, so you can get more details about it. And for example, in this case, on the right side of this uh, screen, uh, we can see field IDs with their uh, brain imaging data types. It can be both uh, raw bulk data as well as data ingested to cohort browser in the form of database. And if you would like to know more about individual imaging data types, modalities and measurement protocols. You can find it in publicly available uh, documentation, which is provided by uh, UK Biobank. So 
since this is the first non genomics imaging uh, UKB wrap webinar, we would like to first put image processing into the broader context and to the world of biomedical informatics and uh, other UKB wrap data. In the previous webinars, uh, we had chance uh, to hear details and uh, see some examples of running bioinformatics analysis, mostly uh, running on sequencing data and all the relevant um, tools. Uh, now, we would like to expand this world and add information about image processing at this or during this presentation, we will be mostly speaking about volumetric data, which is different from sequencing. And we will be mostly covering 3D volumes, images, and uh, 2D uh, matrix uh, data. We will be also talking about different file formats. Both bioinformatics, uh, as well as image processing, then well fit into the world of biomedical informatics, which is then related to many other relevant file formats and other data and signals. Examples might be, for example, electrocardiography, it could be accelerometric data, or very importantly, it could be information about individual diseases or particular diseases in a form of international classi classification of diseases version 10. So you can correlate your, your data to another phenotypes. And uh, also uh, image processing and bioinformatics have some significant overlap. Uh, but on the other hand, uh, what are the main differences between image processing versus uh, bioinformatics? And when, so when your algorithms are in place and uh, when a tool or algorithm or method is picked, then the computing part is not much different from genomics. Of course, there are some differences in the underlying data file format. So for image processing, you will be, uh, of course, working with image files. And in bioinformatics, you will be working with DNA sequences and variant files. There are also other aspects of working with these data, uh, typically working or designing or preparing your workflows. So typically for image processing, you will work with, uh, or you would work in Bash, or you would use some specialized system like NiPipe. And in bioinformatics, in this case, that would be Viddle or CWL. So what currently you can do on the UKB wrap in terms of neuroimaging, what is, what is currently available, you can directly jump into the working uh, with imaging and neuroimaging data and use already pre-computed image derived phenotypes and work with those via cohort browser, and we will provide example. Uh, you can also install open source tools according to your needs and perform a command line interface driven image analysis. Such example might be you can utilize tools such as FSL or FreeSurfer for neuroimaging and compute even more derived phenotypes um, on top of the phenotypes which are already available in the cohort browser. Uh, there is great support for machine learning. So you can conduct your machine learning analysis and train models on imaging data. And what would be, what could be super useful for working with imaging data, it's a support for graphics processing units, which can, oh, which, which, will, uh, which will make your computations uh, much uh, faster. So how can you run your machine learning models with GPUs on the UKB app? For those who know JupyterLab, you can run JupyterLab session. You can select JupyterLab session from tools. And then what is really, really important, you will need to select GPU instance type. So for example, you can select MEM3 GPU instance type. And once your session is uh, ready to go, once it's initialized, uh, you can run it, you can open JupyterLab and check with a specific command uh, if everything, all the environment is uh, ready to go. So, um, so far, uh, UKB wrap uh, delivered or offers uh, over 35 tools in wrap, but here we would like to specifically talk about uh, the highlighted um, box in red color which is related to imaging and neuroimaging. 
Specifically at this moment, there is NiPipe pre-installed under MLIP Jupyter Lab environment, but at this moment, it's just NiPipe and pre-installed NiPipe, not other tools like FSL or FreeSurfer. There is also uh, a lot of frameworks for machine learning. Examples are TensorFlow, Py PyTorch, or Scikit-learn. So you can use it for your machine learning applications. And uh, this is especially perfectly compatible with uh, MEM3 GPU instance types. If you would like to get, uh, or for those who are more interested in getting some pragmatic machine learning examples uh, and use the data I mentioned on the previous slide, uh, we would like to refer to the recent uh, YouTube uh, recording, uh, which was shared by uh, UK Biobank. And uh, this presentation, this recording is, uh, is called, uh, is named how imaging data enables scientific discoveries. So there you can find more machine learning um, examples of advanced method and uh, such example of, uh, of running advanced machine learning model might be convolutional neural network for precise measurement of the heart, but definitely you would be able to implement machine learning for raw imaging data. Yeah, and for those who are not planning to use uh, and analyze and analyze raw images, uh, there is a great opportunity to directly work with uh, imaging and neuroimaging data via Cohort Browser. Cohort Browser is a powerful tool where you can load, filter, and analyze your cohorts. So in this case, we are providing example uh, done on uh, synthetic uh, phenotypic data. And uh, this is especially useful, for example, for non-neuroscience uh, scientists, and also, for example, for genomic scientists er, and, and other researchers, from, for, for example, from the field of dementia. Uh, so uh, you can directly access, for example, volumes of gray matter and other neuroimaging features and create your cohorts. In this case, let's say we are creating cohorts, uh, we, we are filtering for volume of gray matter, which is in some specific range. And uh, this will filter down the data and uh, create our cohort. This, create, uh, this created cohort can be then directly analyzed in the cohort browser, visualized in the cohort browser, or you can export it to another downstream analysis and possibly uh, feed your uh, machine learning models with the data or use it, uh, for example, in your GVAS studies. So, Andre, yeah. what if people want to analyze uh, their own images, images that they have that are directly pursuant to their UK Biobank uh, proposal, um, but are not actually on the wrap right now? Yes, Ben, that's a great question. For these purposes and for these applications, we can talk about DICOM and Nifty files, which are the typical raw files available on the UK BRAP, which store and which describe image information. So let's maybe uh, get uh, more into this and deep dive into these two file formats right now. So let's first talk about DICOM because DICOM, it's a typical file format which stores uh, various uh, imaging data from medical imaging devices. This is typically in DICOM format and it uh, consists of uh, two parts. Typically it contains data and relevant metadata. Example of such metadata might be, for example, image resolution. And uh, DICOM uh, actually ensures high quality of the uh, images is retained. So example of such data, and you can directly work with the data, you can find it uh, on the UK BRAP in the, in the, uh, in the project. Uh, and such examples are, for example, waveforms, it can be X-ray scanning, it can be computed tomography slices, uh, and DICOM is typically file format, which uh, consists of a folder. And this fo folder contains many, uh, 2D metrics data, I mean like slices, it means one file per slice. Uh, and uh, it can be also magnetic resonance imaging, 
And in magnetic resonance imaging on the UKB RAP, we can find uh, many modalities. Uh, it could be, for example, T1 weighted images, T2 weighted images, or flare, and um, how this is represented or how this is uh, acquired, this type of image, uh, brightness and contrast uh, are determined by physical properties. So um, it can be uh, great for uh, various applications. And when we jump into the related file type, which is Nifty, uh, what is different? Uh, what is different from Nifty? Nifty basically stores 3D voxel data. So in this case, uh, Nifty is a 3D array. Uh, it's also typically, it could be also typically called Tensor. And basically what does that mean? Nifty re is represented as one file per volume. This is the difference. Uh, between DICOM and Nifty, and typically one file containing uh, 3D information is more compact. It's not that complicated like, like DICOM, and it's more preferable for some machine learning applications over DICOM. So yeah, and why, uh, why we need image visualization? And once we un understand individual file format or the basic file formats on the UKB wrap, we can now more talk about image visualization, why this is important and why this is essential and how we can actually visualize such data on the UKB RAM. Let's talk about uh, what is visualization, why this may be essential and do some introduction to visualization. Typically, why visualization is important, is important for quality control. So we can then ask questions as we have one mentioned on this slide. Let's say, how does a scientist or tool developer confirm their method? It could be genius method or al algorithms. So this is like first use case where visualization is really, really essential. And then uh, I would like to talk about, I would like to mention other clinical use cases. Um, and these use cases are typically related to data labeling, data annotation, finding or detecting, let's say, tumor in the images and also for uh, labeling data for manual classification and determining clinical phenotypes or diseases. So these are all examples why visualization is essential. And with that, what are the options? Uh, let's first talk about the options in general, and then we will more focus on implementation on the UK BRAP. First of all, we can consider non-interactive. This is also called static plots uh, for imaging, specifically in Python. Uh, there is a bunch of frameworks, a right? bunch of libraries you can use. Here, I would like to mention just three. First of them is PyDICOM, enables working with DICOM images, Nibabel, and then Nylearn. And we will show you some example in the next section. Uh, here on the right side, here is simple code snippet, how you can run static plot in Jupyter Lab, and how you can possibly visualize T1 Nifty image. And then more importantly, on the UKB wrap and for imaging and neuroimaging, we would need to consider interactive plots. Uh, there are many options, many solutions, uh, what uh, we can implement. And one possible implementation might be uh, within Jupyter Lab notebook and do it as interactive session. Then uh, we can prototype, we can implement, we can deploy Mango Papaya Viewer, which is a really powerful tool. Uh, and then we can also talk about some general scientific image viewers, which are not at this moment supported on the UK BRAP, uh, but uh, works well with images and also enables uh, annotating data and so on. An example of that could be ImageJ or Fiji, or specifically, uh, we can use really complex and advanced tools uh, such as FSL or FreeSurfer, which, which are coming from brain images uh, and brain imaging domain, but this tool requires X uh, window graphic user interface. First example of interactive plot and interactive plotting and visualizing data is a widget-based interactive visualization and solution. Uh, you can implement this solution in Jupyter Lab. It's a very simple implementation. You can do it just by implementing a few lines of code in Jupyter Lab. You can see the exact code 
you can see the exact commands on the left side of the screen. We are just importing a nifty widget uh, library and visualizing data. And on the right side of this screen, we can see uh, actual visualization. Uh, here we can control this visualization by the sliders. And also we can uh, change the color of the individual axis here, like uh, sagittal view, coronal view, and axial view. So this can be the right method how to uh, do some quality control of your imaging data. If we jump into more advanced tool, which can be run on the UK VRAP, it's a Mango Papaya Viewer. Uh, Mango Papaya Viewer can be deployed on the UK VRAP as a custom HTTPS applet. And actually it's running in the browser. It does not need uh, to be uh, X window GUI and you can run it, you can deploy it uh, via TTYD app. Uh, if you would like to know more details about it, about it uh, let's uh, ask uh, some questions uh, at community.dnanexus.com and we will be able to provide more uh, guidance on that. Uh, and uh, this is implementation of this tool is based on already existing documentation for DNA Nexus. And uh, just to mention the actual visualization here, we are here, uh, we are here trying to visualize the same uh, data as on the previous slides. This is animated visualization and it's running in loop. And here we are adding T1 image. And at this point, the user experience with this tool is really smooth. Uh, we can change uh, the individual views we can uh, see some settings and also we can do some measurement. So that would be perfect tool for many uh, visualizations and applications on the UK VRAP. So that was to the visualization part. And in the upcoming uh, part, we would like to talk about selected examples of running neuroimaging tools on the UK VRAP. This will be mostly, we will here be mostly focused on neuroimaging, but if you would like to work with other imaging resources on the UK VRAP, like let's say cardiac images or OCTs, uh, you can of course install your own tools and use similar principles uh, like will be described in the, uh, in the, in the next section. So let's, jump into that directly. And uh, let's first do some high level overview, what steps people do in neuroimaging and uh, why we decided to include uh, these uh, tools as examples. So typically what, uh, what people do, people work with DICOM slices or nifty volumes. Uh, if, people, um, if people are getting DICOM slices from the medical devices, there is possibility to do some conversion step. This conversion step is DICOM to Nifty, and we will show you how to run it on the UK VRAP, what, what are the opportunities for us, and what are the methods to be implemented. And once this is done, once we work either with Nifty or DICOM, uh, typically Nifty, we can do some advanced uh, downstream analysis for neuroimaging and uh, create our pipelines. Typically what we can do, what are the typical tools? Uh, typical tools are FSL and FreeSurfer. And uh, these tools are typically related. Uh, what you can do with that, it's typically segmentation, image segmentation, cortical, uh, cortical segmentation, subcortical segmentation, image registration uh, to get uh, to uh, match the modalities uh, together or combine modalities together. It could be some functional analysis or you can compute image derived phenotypes like it was done for the data which are available in the cohort browser. So now let's talk more technically about some real pipeline. Here on the right side of this uh, screenshot, we can see um, zoomed we are zoomed into some part of the real pipeline, which consists of uh, relatively many steps. Uh, first step here was a tool MRI convert to DICOM to convert from DICOM to Nifty. And then uh, the authors here were applying uh, steps of FSL and steps of uh, FreeSurfer. So this can be really 
uh, really, really comprehensive uh, pipeline and how we can implement these individual steps on the UKB wrap. Uh, we can do it by uh, using, by installing the tools or just by using uh, dockerized versions of the tools. For example, for FSL, we can use uh, Brain Life FSL and for FreeSurfer and also for NiPipe and other, other tools, we would be, uh, we could be using NiPipe. Again, it could be dockerized version. If you would like to work uh, with command line interface and other packages, as we have it already mentioned, uh, we can work with some Python packages, PyDICOM for processing DICOM, and we will show you some examples. We can consider uh, uh, NI Babel, which is uh, intended for processing NIFTIs, or if you would like to do some advanced statistics like first order uh, statistics or second order, order uh, statistic statistics for your uh, research, uh, we, uh, we can provide some examples of running uh, Nylearn. Let's first talk about the basic steps. Uh, and first step of uh, typically each neuroimaging data processing is DICOM to NIFTY conversion. So we will be uh, focusing on this step and what this step actually does. It converts DICOM images to NIFTY. Uh, mostly uh, this is supported for, or most anatomical CT and magnetic resonance image data um, are supported and how to how what are the possibilities of running it on the ukb wrap so we have many possibilities of running it uh, such examples might be you can create and build your applet you can run cloud workstation uh, spin up the machine and do your analysis there you can also consider running a workstation in browser via ttyd and similarly, like for Cloud Workstation, run the analysis there. You can use in uh, Jupyter Lab or another useful option uh, is uh, or would be Swiss Army Knife Plus plus uh, Dockerized version of your tool. Uh, if you would like to know more about how to run uh, these uh, these types of uh, analysis such as building up at cloud workstation and so on, we would uh, recommend uh, watching uh, recordings, previous recordings. So you will get more details about it, how to, how to run it. In this case, uh, we would like to just remind uh, how you can work in the cloud and remind some basic mental models, how we can work in the cloud. In the cloud, typically you will request worker, which is also instance. You will get at some point uh, your temporary worker. And on the worker, you can also provide environment. If this is, let's say this is JupyterLab environment. So you can select ML IP environment, which includes uh, the tools we've already discussed uh, during this webinar. What you would need to do next you would need to then transfer your scripts and data from the permanent project storage uh, to your temporary worker. Uh, in case of running analysis for brain or other imaging data, you would need to work in bulk and appropriate folder with your imaging data. And then you would be able to do exact steps of your analysis Typically, the file formats are zipped, so you would need to first unzip and then execute your code. Uh, your code for imaging uh, might be a segmentation. It might be um, some image transformation, image smoothing, uh, school stripping, and so on. So after you are done with your analysis, uh, there will be another or one more step needed. And this step is uh, to output transfer uh, or to transfer output to permanent, back to permanent project storage. So you will then need to transfer the results back to the project. And example of such uh, results for imaging would be plots, will be PDFs, more specifically will be um, transformed images or image derived phenotypes. 
This was just uh, to remind basic steps. And if you know, if you would like to know more uh, about uh, cloud-based uh, analysis and these principles, I would like to refer uh, to a previous webinar, which was uh, which uh, which which was titled uh, "Starting Cloud Analysis in the UK Biobank Research Analysis Platform." So. Uh, let's transfer the previous slide to a real example of running DICOM to Nifty conversion. So what, you, what we need to do when running DICOM to Nifty or very simple example of running DICOM to Nifty, we would need to first uh, download data from permanent project storage using the X download command. Then we can actually do the processing and uh, process data with DICOM to Nifty. And once we are done, we can uh, upload data back uh, by using DX upload command to our permanent storage. There are a couple of possibilities how to run DICOM to Nifty. We can uh, decide to go with bash version of DICOM to Nifty conversion. This tool is called DCM to uh, Nix. Uh, there is also Python alternative, which is called DCM stack. And for those who uh, like uh, R, uh, R also provides wrapper for DICOM to Nifty conversion. And this wrapper is called uh, Oro, uh, dot, uh, DICOM. So here on the right side of this uh, screen, we are running our analysis in Jupyter Lab. And we will need to first download the tool. We are downloading the tool from GitHub and we can then unzip the tool. And more importantly, then we can specify our files. We can also run this analysis in batch for many, many files. And for press specified files, we can then run, run one option might be to run a for loop and process data in for loop. Uh, so with that, we will get our results, which can then be transferred back to the project. So this is very simple example, how to run DICOM to Nifty conversion on the UK BRAP. Now I would like to jump into more advanced command. Uh, so once we are done with our DICOM to Nifty conversion and we have our data now available in the Nifty format, uh, we can run FSL. One option of running FSL could be via Docker image. Uh, maybe let's first talk about, let's first mention uh, what is FSL. FSL is comprehensive library for uh, image analysis tools. And uh, this tool, I mean FSL, was actually used to prepare, to pre-compute, to pre-process uh, images, raw images on the UK BRAP, and it was used to derive uh, image phenotypes in cohort browser. So I mean the information uh, which is available in the form of database in your dispensed project. And FSL includes many, many tools. One subtool is called, is called BAT. Uh, BAT uh, stands for brain extraction. It's also, it could be also represented or image it, uh, or imagined by a school stripping. Uh, there are another useful examples of running FSL, and you can also find some examples in the cohort browser. And it could be, for example, fast, fast tool, which is a segmentation tool, typically to segment uh, why matter, gray, gray matter, or other parts of the brain or nervous system. Uh, there is also a tool called FLIRT, which is uh, meant for linear registration application. And uh, for many users, it could be also useful to use FSL map, uh, which, uh, which wraps, which collects uh, many mathematical manipulations of the images. So to provide an example, let's consider example on the right side here. And here we see imaging, uh, we see image of the brain in uh, three axes, uh, X, Y, and Z. And this is before using FSL. So we would like to apply bat command for brain extraction. So just after we applied the command, we will get post-processed image, and now the image 
is after school stripping. So that's one example of FSL operation, which can be run on the UK BRAP and how we can actually run it on the UK BRAP. Uh, here we can see example of running brain extraction in FSL. Uh, here I implemented example when I was running Swiss Army Knife. Swiss Army Knife is tool available in the tools library. And this is super power, powerful and perfect because I was able to specify my image. In this case, it's input, input file is T1 nifty file. I was able to specify public Docker image identifier. So I'm, I would like to download Docker file from publicly available rep repository and run it on the input file. And then I was able to specify exact command line which will transfer my inputs to outputs. And in this case, I would like to run bat under FSL Docker image, apply it to T1 nifty file and produce results, which will be named brain ext after extraction. So now uh, this will be executed on the platform and I will get my desired output, which is brain extracted. Just to briefly talk about configuration. So I just in summary, I used Swiss, Swiss Army Knife tool. Runtime uh, was less than five minutes. I was able to uh, select appropriate instance type. In this case, I used mem1 ssd1 v2x8. Uh, and this analysis was inexpensive. So another example, of uh, running analysis on the UK BRAP, we can now focus more on some Python packages. Uh, in this case, I would like to introduce you to PyDICOM, uh, which, is, uh, which is great for working with uh, DICOM files. Uh, it enables uh, getting metadata as uh, we've been discussing about uh, DICOMs and its uh, data and metadata. So, Using this package, we are able to work with data as well as with metadata. So on the uh, life, uh, left side of this uh, screen, we have some uh, example code or, of uh, how we can import these images and how to work, let's say, with some example data available in the package. So in this case, we are trying to load, we are trying to load some small CT DICOM image. And by loading this data structure, by using DCM read command, we can then access, we can then print information uh, about metadata. In this case, we have three examples of metadata, its patient ID, its modality, and its study date. And then we can create static plot. In this case, it's not interactive, it's static plot and we can see the example on the right side of this screen. So we have here full uh, representation, full view of the prints as well as, as well as the image. And another useful Python package for working with uh, nifty files is uh, nibabel, uh, which, is, uh, which has many options, many functionalities available. But uh, me personally, I like the following function, which enables uh, getting information about uh, which convention uh, was uh, used for this image. Uh, this, pro this program, this library can decide if the image is re represented in a neurological or radiological representation. It also provides information about a fine transformation, uh, which is uh, really uh, necessary information available for each nifty file. Yes, so now we have here a tip and uh, because in this presentation, we are not uh, talking, we are not planning to talk about Viddle workflows or provide some pipeline uh, system uh, with its examples. Uh, we have here tip. So for those who are interested and for those who would like to do some hands-on and experiment uh, with, uh, with the presented material uh, here, uh, we 
we are proposing here first a tip, which is to design a Vidal workflow with Dicom to Nifty Step and also FSL bed tasks as uh, Docker images. So if you would like to jump into these applications, uh, we are here referring to Vidal documentation and uh, previous Vidal previous little webinar so you can find more information there and applied uh, this knowledge to neuroimaging space and implement Dicom to Nifty and FSL pipeline and because typically imaging data are provided in uh, zipped files uh, you can for some applications uh, you can reuse already existing codes in this case that would be Vidal code which uh, which is all which is already approved and uh, available publicly and this is intended for working with zipped files so for those who are interested uh, these are the tips for making some hands-on yes with that ben could you please continue we will go ahead and ask andre some questions so uh this and also uh if andre we're putting him on the spot there's some fairly complex questions here. So, uh, but Andre and I will be on community.dnanexus.com immediately following this webinar. So if you type out your questions, we'll be able to have more in-depth discussions with you. Also, some folks were like, hey, I'm looking for other people that are doing retinal stuff, that are doing OCT stuff. If you want to find other people, you can put something out on the community. Uh, there's some sub communities like for neuroscience, for example, but also you can just put something generally saying, I'm looking to collaborate with other folks. Check that out. And of course, uh, check out the approved research applications on uh, UK Biobank. Um, so you can search through those too. But the idea of the community is such that people can kind of interact in real time and we can sort of help facilitate in any way we can. I mean, really, we're here for you. Uh, to really sort of help push research forward. That said, um, Andre, do you have any visualization for the repeated IDPs and trajectories? At this moment, I'm not sure, or I'm not sure if I understand correctly what, what are these repeated IDPs. All right, maybe we'll uh, we'll come back to that question. Uh, yes. If the, the asker could pop in uh, some more details, that would be awesome. Um, yeah. So uh, here's a more general question. Can you talk a little bit um, about um, processing and analyzing OTC, OCT scans and retinal images? And then there's a more specific follow-up to that by somebody else. Uh, who said, will the OCT converter be implemented in the future um, for, uh, say, FDS and FDA files? Yes, definitely. These are great ideas. Uh, at this moment, OCT data are similarly, like for neuroimaging, uh, ingested uh, into the cohort browser. So there were all, all, already pre-computed some uh, features for OCTs, but uh, one can definitely run, uh, for example, Jupyter Lab and uh, implement uh, custom uh, made uh, tools. Also, uh, would be definitely nice to replicate some uh, results from research articles and uh, run some, apply this, this analysis on uh, UK BRAP data. Uh, yeah. So yeah, uh, just in short, uh, some data are all already computed uh, in the and available in the cohort browser, and uh, we can definitely work with raw data in Jupyter Lab or via TTYD and so on. So uh, to some specific tools uh, at this moment. Um, in my opinion, in my understanding, there are no specific tools in the tools library on the UK BRAP for OCT. Uh, yeah, so I mean, hopefully we'll be able to bring that up. And if we do a workshop, uh, we'll be able to show you how to import those tools. Uh, that said, there's, there's two more general questions. And I would really ask if, uh, if you guys, if you're on the community, if, if the people that ask these questions can repost them to the community. Um, mm -hmm. because I think they'll be useful to a lot of people. One is, could you recommend any open source tools for annotating data in 3D, like to create labels for 3D segmentation? And I know that's something 
that uh, Daniel Quang's worked on a lot uh, at DNA Nexus. He's not on this webinar right now, but I'm sure he'd love to talk about that. Andre, do you want to comment on that at all, or should we we uh, pop it on the community? Uh, we have uh, Ben. We have just ex just uh, some hands-on experiments uh, and experience with uh, NVIDIA tools. So probably these are not open source. All right, so I will say that NVIDIA is a collaborator of ours. And uh, so we're working to get, I mean, on the genomic side, we're working to get a lot of the Parabricks tools up on DNA Nexus. Many of them are already there. And then we're also talking to the Clara folks uh, to get things up there. So um, yeah, stay tuned uh, for all that. But again, uh, there are many ways to import your own tools, which segues into our next question, uh, which is, is it possible to download the raw data in order to pre run pre-existing pipelines that are difficult to port to wrap? So I would love it if you would post this to community because, um, so the thing is that some data, some of the bulk data you can download, some of the bulk data you can't download, right? And those restrictions come from the UK Biobank, not from us. So uh, that said, the, the deal that, UK Biobank, and I've said this in other webinars, uh, the deal that UK Biobank has with AWS um, is uh, the cloud uh, compute is amazing. Like the, the rate for cloud compute is amazing. You're not gonna find cloud compute uh, anywhere else. And if you don't download the files, you'll have egress. So really ask me uh, if you think something is hard to port and I'll figure out a way to port it to DNA Nexus. I've, I've worked with dozens of people to port all kinds of crazy things to DNA Nexus. And I can tell you, it's pretty much possible. I mean, if you, you have FPGA, GPU type stuff, I mean, we can, we can figure it out. So post it to the community. Feel free to reach out to me or Andre, ask specific questions, but, but it's best to, to post things to the community. Also, if you, if you have to uh, post some things to to support uh, at dnanexus.com. If you have just simple technical issues, you get an error message that you don't understand when you're porting something, uh, use that there real quick. Um, here's another general question that I just saw pop up. Uh, what would you say is the main reason? Oh, I just said that. Uh, somebody just asked why you should do analysis on the wrap versus downloading. And I think I just covered that. So I'm not gonna ask again. Um, that was a prescient question. Um, Um, all right. Awesome. Um, okay. Yeah. Um, again, please post stuff to the community. Um, and Andre and I will be on the community, uh, right after this webinar to answer questions. I'm seeing some fascinating, very like specific stuff in here, uh, that's a little bit spread out. Um, and, uh, yeah, there's a really interesting discussion going on in the chat. So, uh, if you guys can move that over to the community, I think that would be uh, really good. Um, okay. Yeah. The question was about the, um, bulk types that we can download. I still don't know if I know what you mean by bulk types, but, um, uh, let me, uh, sort of wrap this webinar up and again, feel free to reach out to, to us on the community. Uh, I'm pretty easy to find online. My name is Ben Busby. If you Google me in bioinformatics, you find a bunch of different stuff. Uh, and uh, yeah, or you can reach out to us through DNA Nexus. That all works. So um, I'd be eager to talk to, to any of you guys um, about this kind of stuff. Um, and particularly bulk data. I just, um, and, and once again, I mean, uh, what I can't do is make quick policy changes in the UK Biobank, right? The UK Biobank, as you all know, uh, is a nonprofit organization that has made right what is i think right now is the world's greatest data set but they have uh made very careful policy decisions and so uh i can't uh reach out to them and say hey change this policy decision right so uh but i can help you find a technical workaround right and that's that's what i'm here to do so um uh yeah so um okay uh i'm gonna try to take another crack at joseph herman so if you look at the UK Biobank do documentation, again, their policy decisions, not our policy decisions, um, they uh, will uh, allow, they will explain uh, where you can download bulk 
and uh, non-bulk, and uh, I can put a link into that uh, in community later. But again, I mean, honestly, you have your own EC2 instances. When you log on to RAP, check out the rate that you're paying. Uh, and also, that's going to be uh, in a different AWS location, so you're still going to have to pay egress. So you got to pay a egress, and you're probably paying, depending on where you work and what you're doing, uh, you're probably going to be paying more uh, for your own EC2 instances. Now, everybody else, everybody has different contractual deals with Amazon, so I can't tell you exactly what it looks like, but I will say, um, and Mark Effingham has said it's okay for me to say, that uh, UK Biobank and uh, AWS have negotiated uh, a very um, a very good deal, the best deal I've ever seen uh, for doing cloud computing uh, on large data. So um, hopefully that answered your question. Okay, awesome, yeah. Um, and really reach out to me uh, 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 directly if you want to, and I'm happy to talk to you about it. Uh, so uh, yeah, I think with that, um, I think, Oh, can we please have a webinar about querying the WGS or WES data? Yes. So um, we had a, an advanced workshop. We talked a little bit about HAIL. Um, and uh, maybe we'll have a specific HAIL workshop. Uh, we've had a lot of webinars. If you look at all of the web webinar recordings, I think uh, Brenton has uh, posted them up uh, a fair amount. Uh, several times, but maybe Brenton can post it up one more time. There are a bunch of webinars about querying WGS, WES. Um, what I'm excited about in the future, I, I will say to this particular questioner, what I'm excited about in the future is integrating the imaging and other data types with the genomic. And we're doing some really exciting things. You'll see in the cardiovascular roundtable with integrating ECG data and genomic data. And I'm I'm, I'm excited uh, about that one. Um, awesome. Uh, yes. Uh, um, and so, yeah, the WES workshop, uh, we've done some things with that. Um, but yeah, uh, so querying VCF files, uh, we'll keep going. And if you can, uh, you know, the more you post that in places where DNA Nexus people see it, the most more likely you are uh, to get those webinars, so post things in the community and see if you can get a following behind you. That just helps the prioritization. Uh, so that's great. Thank you, everybody, for coming. Thanks for hanging in. Uh, there were a lot of questions. Uh, I'm really excited to talk to people about OCD and 3D segmentation and integrating WGS and uh, WES. So, uh, and, and hopefully, um, hopefully that'll be sort of a major push in the fall. So, if you're interested in that stuff, start chats on the community. Uh, that, that works out well. Thank you uh, for posting emoticons uh, about this webinar. And uh, uh, thanks to Andre and Brenton and Chai. We will see you guys later.